Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our next example of how to find the torque. This is kind of a classic example. Here we have a beam and from the end of it we have an object hanging from a cable. It has a certain amount of mass. The mass is 10 kilogram. The length of the beam is 2 meters. The beam makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal and we're trying to find the torque that this, this mass is causing on this particular object. So we're trying to find the torque. And again, in this case, we see, all right, uh, what would be the best thing to do? And since we can see that the force is acting in this direction, there's the force, and we know that the force is equal to the weight of the object, m times g, you can see a nice triangle right here. We can also see that this is the line of action of the force, if we continue this with a dashed line, which means that this here can be considered to be the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, the point at which the whole thing would be rotating. That, may, that means that the second method we learned might be the easiest way to approach this. In other words, we can say that the torque is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point. Now notice that if we take a look here, we can see that the hypotenuse of this triangle is L, the length of the beam, and this here, D perpendicular, would be the adjacent side to the angle which means that the torque is equal to the force, which is the weight of the object, m times g, multiplied times the length of the beam, L, times the cosine of the angle, cosine of theta. Now, plug in all the numbers that we know, the torque, therefore, is equal to the mass, which is 10 kilograms, g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, kilograms meters per second squared is newtons, L is 2 meters, so that's where we get Newton times meters, and then we have the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 1 half. 1 half times 2 is 1, 10 times 9.8 is 98, that means the torque is equal to 98 Newton meters. Now let's find the direction of the torque. Notice that if this was the only force acting on this beam, it would cause the beam to rotate in a clockwise direction which means we have a clockwise torque, and a clockwise torque is also known as a negative torque. It means it would be pointed into the board. The magnitude of the torque is 98 Newton meters. The direction of the torque is clockwise. Also, if we put in vector notation, we can say that the torque is equal to minus, because we have to take the minus into account, a minus 98 Newton meters into the negative direction into the board that would be into the negative z direction. So either you could write it as a magnitude or you can write it as a vector quantity. And that's how it's done.